What do you feel about that specifically about women using their bodies? I think it's just a damn industry. shame. I think it's a damn shame. Because if you're a model and, you know, it's not like I dress like a boy, you know, like I still dress cute and stuff like that, but I just hate when I see a female DJ up there jumping up and down and sparkled bikini and they're not even transitioning or reading the crowd or even being a good person when they meet fans makes the stereotype even worse for us and already gets the pressure put on us that actually work our asses off and don't utilize our bodies more to sound perfect. They're expecting us to sound like shit. Because of that expectation, I know that there's no time that I walk up to a paradox that I don't go up there and I'm not completely prepared to murder it. No matter what I thought I was gonna play or what I'm going to play. And this year in 2019 particularly, there hasn't been a set that I've walked away from and I've been DJing for about five years, and the first four years, I can't say that every set I walked away from, I felt like, yeah, bitch, I just killed out. And I know we're just talking about bitch, but in this sense, I can use it because in 2019, this past year, every set I've walked away from, I'm like, I just fucking murdered that. Mm. Like, whoever was here, come and tell me about it, because I know oh, that yeah. shit was fire, I you know what I mean? It. And it's just... I have got an absolutely fire podcast for you guys. Tune in and enjoy with Miss DJ Zoe Gray. Welcome. Hi. To the 14th episode of the Mr. Atlanta podcast. David Old Brown here. My guest today. Zoe Gray. Hi. So Zoe, why don't you tell the audience about yourself? No problem. Um, I'm a DJ. I go by DJ Zoe Gray. I'm from Charlotte. I've been living in Atlanta for about two years. I'm moving to Vegas at the end of the month. Um, I've played at places like Shaggy Beats and Imagine here in Atlanta, and I produce a little bit. I'm going to be getting a little bit more into that, so you guys will see some stuff coming out for me in 2020. Mm. And yeah, that's a short summary. Mm, oh yeah, what kind of music? I'm an EDM. I'm more on like the trap, dubstep, bassier side of music, and then I also have an alias that's like in the tech house, techno, deep house realm too. Really? Mm -hmm. What's up with this alias? Um, I have a really big passion for both, and they're kind of hard to mix together in a sense. What, when you only... house? Yeah, you can, but there's just two different kinds of vibes that I like to provide, depending on what the show is and stuff like that. So I like having the option to get more bookings and stuff with that other alias. Okay. Yeah, that makes so sense. So you get, you do house more preferably. Not necessarily. Okay. I think I love them both just as much. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's your inspirations? Um, Alice in Wonderland would definitely have to be one. Mm. Um, AT Aliens, they're from Atlanta, mm. love them. Um, Troy Boy's a huge one, I really like Diplo. Um, the All whole... pretty solid Atlanta references. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, there's a reason I'm here. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What brought you here? I was getting bookings here in Atlanta more than I was in Charlotte, and I hadn't lived anywhere else other than Charlotte. So I moved here only knowing the promoter that had booked me here a few times and just Came here on a whim and ended up, you know, doing pretty well. Mm. So that's how I'm here. And I just love Atlanta. It's one of the most cultured, inspiring places anybody could ever want to get started at or in general just pursue their career. Okay. Mm-hmm. So when was that? Um, it'll be, it was two years ago last month. Yeah, 2017, okay. October. So what do you love about Atlanta? Um, like I was saying before, you just have the biggest variety of people that you could possibly meet. I remember telling people when I was living in Charlotte and I would get in an Uber, or I would just meet random people and I would tell them I'm a DJ and a producer. They would like kind of give me the reaction as if that was funny or that was cute. But in Atlanta, when I tell people that, you know, they're more so like, oh shit, am I talking to someone that's famous? And they ask me all these questions and they're really into it. So that's relieving and inspiring and then some to say the least. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everybody takes the time yeah. to acknowledge you. Absolutely, there. absolutely. Figure out what you're about, see if they can be involved or can support. It's mm. a very comforting place to be for me. Mm. If I move, sad to lose you at the end of this month. Yeah, um, if I ever come back from the West Coast, Atlanta is where I'm going to come back to. Like Atlanta is my home. Okay. You know? Yeah. So you're going to Vegas. Mm -hmm. Where are you moving to? I'm going to be living right on the Strip. Okay. Yeah, I'm not very familiar with Vegas because I haven't been there before, so I don't know the geography about it that much, but I know I'm living on the Strip, near all the things. Near all the things. Near all the things. Yeah, it's yeah. it's nuts down there. Yeah, yeah, I've heard. I'm excited to experience it and hopefully take it over, mm, you know? Damn, girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, boy. So the first time <laughs> I went to Vegas, I was 19. Mm -hmm. um, 
I did a bicycle ride from San Francisco to Washington, D.C. for people with disabilities. Wow. How far is that? It's 4,200 miles because we zigzagged a little bit and hit um, different big cities because it's 2,900 miles across America. Um, and we did it over 67 days and went to different large cities. Um, I did the South route in 2008 and the North route in 2010. And we went through Vegas, mm -hmm. um, like day fifth, 13. And that was the first time I drank in three weeks after, no, I, I guess I drank like once or twice, very lightly in San Fran, um, right when I got there. But then if you were underage, you weren't allowed to drink on Journey of Hope. Fair enough. And so it's through my fraternity's philanthropy. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a Pi Kappa Phi mm -hmm. from Georgia State. Mm -hmm and Push America, which stands for Play Units for the Severely Handicapped. Okay. And so we were in Vegas, 35 fraternity guys from different schools Getting across it. America. Holy fuck. Getting it. Oh my God. <laughs> and like, we had some locals kind of tour us around sure. and take us to Fremont off of the main strip and through the main strip. Oh my God. Everything. So good. <laughs> yeah. I've been back three times since, and it's just crazy how climate controlled Vegas is like they because it's hot spot. Yes, it's the middle of the desert. Yes, like there's no Nevada is the worst state in America by far. Oh, to live in <laughs> outside of Vegas. Vegas isn't a part of Nevada. Okay, it is, but it's not. Right, right, right. Like, right. It it's like how Miami America. isn't a part of Florida. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Like it's a whole. Right. It's an anomaly. Sure. Like sure. it's not like Nevada. The rest of Nevada is like eighty five percent government owned. Mm -hmm. It's very. It's got military shit all over. Yeah, I mean, they've done bombing and testing <laughs> and drills and crazy stuff in that desolate desert Ugh. for a while. Yeah. Just not in Vegas. Right, right, right. The anomaly. Um, but the community is one of the first things I got to experience when I was out there. Tell me more. Um, so we're raising awareness for people with disabilities, mm -hmm. going to friendship visits and interacting with people, taking pictures, hanging out. Um, kind of like a celebrity, right? A cyclist across America. This is a planned trip. It's gone on like 30 years. And so I got to meet some really amazing people in the community. And it was pretty cool. And I've had probably like a dozen friends move out there. Okay. Do they enjoy so, it? Are they still there? Oh God, yeah, most really? Of them. Yeah. Really? Cool. Cool. You're definitely going to have to link me with all of them. Absolutely. Cool. I'm not going to be going on bike rides across the country, but. You know, we can still hang out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll come visit you for sure. You have to. You have to. You definitely have to. All right. So, um, tell me more stuff or ask me more stuff. I don't know. This is my first podcast. Okay. Yeah, I'm a little so bit nervous, but it's fun. Yeah. I'm I'm from Charlotte. From Charlotte. In in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Where'd you go yeah. to school? I went to Providence, and then I went to um the University of Charlotte for about a year, and I dropped out. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't figure out what I wanted to do, and I this is before I found the DJing. I've been doing music throughout my whole life, like piano and the clarinet and the flute, but I didn't get the idea to DJ until I was about 20-ish, 21. So I had been dropped out for about a year until I got the inspiration to want to start DJing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was I, the inspo? You know, I was at um, a party where there was a bunch of DJs that were playing, and, you know... Throughout my life, you know, in high school and stuff, when we used to, when we used to have to burn CDs and stuff like that, you remember that, right? Of course, um, those were the days. The, yeah, those were the yeah. days. You really had to work for your music. You, you had really to work did. for it. You really did. You produced something tangible. Yeah, and you gave it to somebody. Yeah, and like you know, there was like a beam of joy coming from their faces whenever oh you God. gave them that mixtape. Like, what did you sharpie marker yes, on exactly. the front of it? Exactly. You know, one little message or note or artistic drawing. Right. I was a very artsy, but I would usually write something. Yeah, something at least clever. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, so I was the one that brought them all for my friends and stuff like that. And whenever I would go to parties, we would always play my playlist and things like that. So when I was at this party, I was sitting with my homegirl and I was saying how these dudes were whack as hell. Like nobody was playing well and I didn't like what they were spinning. And she was like, fuck these guys. You should be a DJ. And I'm like, you know what? 
maybe I should. Maybe I should. And I tried it and it ended up really working out for me. Oh, wow. Yeah. Do you remember who those whack ass guys were? Um, I don't want to say their names. Oh, I don't want to say their names. I'm but not you a do. hater. But you do. Of course. Of course. Parties. I know their so. DJ names and their first and last names. I remember <laughs> all of them. I remember all of them. I could draw them in a picture. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. That. Mm hmm. Well, I mean, they're cool. They're friends because, I mean, I'm from Charlotte, so all the DJs from Charlotte I've known for ever, you know, so I don't want to, I don't want to say anything bad, that but it's not their fault that they're not that talented. Oh, <laughs> oh Right, hurt. right. But, um, yeah, I'm glad I did it. I can't imagine what I would be doing right now if I wasn't doing the DJing and starting to produce music. I eventually want to make my own clothesline. I want to do this whole, like, girl power DJ producer group or whatever I want to I want to create a whole group where you can hire us and we have your promoter your DJ your go-go dancers we'll bring bartenders we'll bring the whole shebang to throw a party for you yeah explain all that yeah um, I mean that's pretty much it that's that's all I've gotten so far but it, um, you know if you want to throw a party and you don't really know how to do it, you can hire us and we'll we'll make make the thing a blowout for you. Okay. Yeah, you know, bachelorette parties, bachelor parties, any other kind of party you can think of. Nice. But you know, whatever, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have an event coming up. Do you? Called Brawl for a Cause. I've heard of it. Have you done it before? Yeah, okay, I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I actually saw it online today. Mm -hmm. Do you already have flyers and stuff out? Yeah, I um, you do. run the social media. Cool, okay, yeah. It's been around for like 13 years. Okay, or so, yeah. 13 events, so I think six years. Okay, um, so I've definitely heard of this before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I fought in it three years ago. Okay. And then linked up X3 Sports with the Brawl for the Brawlers to be able to train at X3 for free. Okay. To do like a crash course, punching three stuff. months before the brawl yeah. starts, right? Punching humans, like yeah. you're truly fighting, yeah. learning, because it's pretty much amateur. Why do boys want to hit each other? <laughs> it's not for that. It's for the causes. True, 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 true. For true, the true. philanthropy. Sure. Like sure. literally, that. I don't like fighting. I don't. I work in mixed martial arts, but I still don't. Yeah, you seem like someone that can fight, but you don't seem like you want to fight. Exactly. You know what I mean? Absolutely, yeah. I can. Fuck shit up, but I never ever want to. That's a lot. You could so be a fighter, but you're not a fighter. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, if you Love ever have to fighting. resort to physical, you know, it's a devolving thing. Yeah, it's um, um which is, you know, not It questions your intelligence too. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well these you know, it's just a thing and, and it's funny when you go out you'll see it. People fighting. Fighting or or verbally antagonizing. Oh uh, gosh, yeah, I've 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 been through it myself. I just walk away. I'm like, all right, it's time to go. <laughs> you can't. Nobody has enough power over me to get me that upset to make me want to hit you. Mm -hmm. Don't touch anybody I love, because then I will hit you. But anything else, no. Mm. So tell me about your family. Okay, yeah. So my mom and dad are still together. I have an older sister. She's 31, and I turn 27 at the end of the month. By the way, mm. um, and I have a younger brother that's 19 that goes to Appalachian. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got lucky. My family's really cool. We all go through what we go through when we grow up and stuff like that. But as we've all gotten out of the house and grown up, you know, we all get along and everybody's healthy. So mm -hmm. I'm lucky for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Yeah, their their uh, mom and dad are still in Charlotte. I get to see them for Thanksgiving coming up, so I'm really excited about that. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. um, and my birthday's coming up, so I'm trying to ask for an Apple Watch. Yeah. But my sister oh. was like, "Keep dreaming, keep dreaming, sis." It's so. such a game changer. I know, I know. That's what I'm trying to explain to them. So work in progress. I'll I'll let y'all know if I get the Apple Watch. There you go. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> um, that's funny. Uh, I guess I could leave with that. My parents are still together. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Tell me about your family. No, um, they're they're still together, but you know, at points in my life, I encourage them not to be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Uh, my parents actually haven't slept in the same room in over ten years. Oh wow. They just um, dependability on both parts. You know, without going into too much detail. Um, if I had it my way, I would have told them to split up a long time ago and try to go find 
some fun. You know? And hopefully, definitely, when I get big, I want to send both of my parents on a big vacation separately and go tell them to do whatever the hell they want. Don't tell me but details. But you know each other. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Don't tell me details. But both of you need to get laid. Oh I know you need to get laid. Oh, my God. I love it. Dude. You know, I don't... That's real. I don't know if I believe in monogamy when you've been with someone for that long. I believe in honesty. That's what I believe in, mm -hmm. first and foremost. If you can figure out an agreement with your partner, you're perfect. But I just can't see myself only wanting to do it with one person forever you know people change I know I've changed I probably will keep changing so yeah like I said when I when when I make it I'm sending both of them on a field trip separately and take pictures but don't tell me shit like I, I don't want to know what you guys are doing oh well, you tell me a little bit yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah okay let me drink about a bottle and a half of wine and smoke a little bit of weed and then you guys can tell me oh, <laughs> but I need to prepare myself for this well what did you graduate with when you went to Georgia State Marketing? I actually graduated with a degree in international real estate, minors in Spanish and hospitality. Interesting. Did nothing with it. Okay. And then did everything with it. Okay, cool. Um, I created a company called Stay ATL. Okay. Doing short term property management. Cool. Consulting and rentals. Cool. Um, now I've converted that into a brand involved with community culture and events. Mm -hmm. um, and look to be renting more properties again in the future. And what I'm working on right now is an event list. Mm hmm. I've Elaborate for me. Working with this group of people, a uh, few that you'll meet tonight. And for the past two months, we've been going to three to five events a day. Oh, wow. Wow. 30 to 50 Busy. a month. I mean, Busy. It's, it's a fuckload. Lots nice of free stop. drinks, though. Absolutely. Lots of free drinks. <laughs> free drinks, free food, yes. free entry, pretty yes. much. Yes. So I'm. We like that. I do a decent amount of research. Sure. Into this, and you know, I've been in Atlanta since 2007, mm -hmm. over a decade. So mm -hmm. there's not really a good medium mm -hmm. to find events, yeah. actual good events that you want to go to, mm -hmm. or at least I want to go to, and I know that my people would want to. Right, 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 right. So I'm putting some effort behind that, and um, pretty much, I don't want to spill too much of the idea. Sure. But it'll be a live calendar online. Cool that you pay to be able to look at mm -hmm. um, and then get access to these sure. events and they'll have different tiers because most of the events are just free. Right. And I find them by being really diligent and thorough mm -hmm. throughout my searchings. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. There's just a lot of different ways. Well, I mean, I know myself, um, I'm not that familiar with things that are outside of the realm of events that I play at or I support. So I know something like that would have been useful to me because I'm always telling people that I want to meet new people that aren't in my industry. Mm. I like to have friends or date outside of my industries because it can get sticky, okay. you know? Yeah. So I think Should that would be, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but um, that would have been useful to be able to be able to have that so I can find other events and stuff that aren't, that don't really have anything to do with what I do. They want to meet new cool people like Absolutely. yourself. Oh, thanks lady. Um, for the record, I actually met, met Mr. Atlanta right here when he was going on a date with my friend and I didn't remember. And I saw him just recently at a soft opening for a club and thought I was meeting him for the first time. When I got here tonight, he was like, mm, no, Zoe, I've met you before. We met before. Which is um, nice because I never get to hit people with that. You no, know, you are I literally, right now. <laughs> I meet everybody. Yeah. I'll brag a little. Sure, brag, I'm man. Helping. I Do literally it. have been hard. That's why I have the capacity and audacity sure. to call myself Mr. Atlanta. Yeah, absolutely. That and because I've hosted over 10,000 guests through couch surfing, Airbnb, and stay ATL. Right. Um, and that's just with rep. That's hospitality. Well, I, I meet a lot of fucking people. I ran for office. Like, I've done some things. And, and I also drink and party. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> if, if I'm... If I'm drinking, it's it's a lot harder to remember people's names. Don't I know it? And and if somebody's not impressionable, then uh, gone then in the wind. In know? the wind. So Absolutely. so I fucking forget people's names a lot. Mm -hmm. Me too. And so, I have to just kind of come to terms with that. Absolutely. That they weren't impressionable enough. And it's not their it's fault. Not it's not your fault. It's, it's me, but it's also them. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, right. Right. It's nobody's fault. Right. Exactly. Right. right. It just is. Even though doing. I feel so guilty. Because I forgot. And I mean, that shows you have a conscience. That shows you have a heart. Like, you should feel bad, but at the same time, there's nothing you can do about it. If they are a regular Joe named Joe, they don't do anything other than just be a regular Joe, 
How are you gonna remember? How are you gonna know? How are you gonna know? The worst, the worst I feel bad is when I introduce myself and someone's like, Zoe, we've met 15 times. And I'm like, okay, so now on, I just need to, when I walk up to someone, I just need to assume that I've met them, even if I haven't before. Just just come up with a big hug and say, nice to see you again. No more, hey, my name is Zoe. Just throw That's them what out celebrities the do. Yeah. That's what celebrities do. Okay, I feel like I just hit a milestone then, just yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. No, cool. I'm for sure. Cool. I've met probably 50 celebrities. Yeah. Uh, big stars. Yeah. And yeah. And every single one. Two Chainz is probably one of my favorites. Oh my god, I love him. So, I love that dude. Oh, so. I've good. never met him, but just 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 watching his personality, I love him. Why? He's so undeniably himself. He's genuine, like he really does try to help and learn and educate and make people laugh mm. and groove, you know? Like he likes inspiring people through his words and through his music and he's doing stuff on TV and stuff like that too that's actually researching the world and learning new things. I yeah, mean, he's smart, he's so smart. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's incredible. Anyway, he cares, continue. he truly cares. Yeah, he does, he does. He cares about the impression he leaves on the world and that resonates with me because that's something that I care about a lot. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to leave this earth knowing that I've affected a whole bunch of people in a whole bunch of different ways in the best way, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. But anyway, so I totally cut about, you off. No, absolutely. That's what this podcast is about. Cutting each other off. Down those rabbit holes. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Sure. So, Interrupting is something I do usually have conversations about. But yeah. you know, before we even came on, I could tell you're a great cool. communicator. Cool. So. cool. Um, when I met 2 Chains, mm -hmm. it was in 2008 at the Braves Stadium. Okay. Um, he was leaving, or we were leaving the Braves game. He was selling CDs. Love it. Love it. Mixtapes out the back Lord. of the Ford Explorer. Yes. That's and, incredible. And I was not, I was just like, whoa. <laughs> but my buddy, he stopped and we talked and, and we dapped him up and, and we ended up buying one of the CDs. Yes. Wow. A whole original 2 chain CD. Like original, original. And it said Titty Boy on it. <laughs> and so, I... I'm working at this law firm about three years ago, and we share an accounting, leasing with an accounting firm, mm -hmm. um, sub-leasing, basically, and he is their client. Okay. And he, this motherfucker's in there like January, getting his taxes done. Way ahead of schedule, right? He's titty boy. Titty, titty boy. Titty boy's on top of the taxes. On top of the taxes. <laughs> I love it. Fucking love it. <laughs> And so I tell him this story when he's leaving, and he goes, this boy dropping history bombs in this bitch. <laughs> and all my bosses were just like, Gah! at first they were like, and then just bust it out. I love it. And I, I, cause I went up to him and I said, Mr. Mr. Epps, my name's David Willem <laughs> Brown. It's nice to meet you. And he goes, David, like he fucking remembered me. Obviously oh my God. he did it. Like so you years. leave an impression. But an impression. You left Absolutely. a motherfucking impression. Absolutely. There you go. There you go. See, well, that's how you do it. Mm -hmm. You got to like give lessons or something. These people need to learn how to, how to leave an impression. Well, my thing is I go up and I say, hi, my name is David Roland Brown. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. Right. Mm -hmm. And I say, David Roland Brown, David mm -hmm. Roland Brown. Because yeah. David Brown is basic yeah. as fuck. Mm -hmm. And I had to get past that yeah 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 and just throw the whole thing in there sure well um so zoe's actually my middle name i know and that's one of the things about you is yeah that it's uh dj zogra right Zogre. right DJ Zogre. well i went by my first name allison my whole life mm. and then when i found the djing because zoe's zoe's always spoke to me way more than allison has because you know, you've met me. Do you, do I not seem way more like a Zoe than an Allison? That's uh, that's funny. Yeah. So when I found the DJing, um, Gray actually came from. I can see Allison too. You can. Yeah, but so I, like, if you're really close to me, Allie, like Allie. like everyone from Charlotte. Um, but um, with the with the DJing and, and my name, um, never like being on like the white or black side. Like everything is a gray area. There's no right or wrong. Blah 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 and. It just it kind of popped in my head. I was like, DJ Zoe Gray, and it just came out like vomit. And so, mm. and so, like you were just saying, David Roland Brown, I have that DJ Zoe Gray myself, you know. And like, I give a good handshake, and mm. I look at you in the eye, and I make sure that you hear me and you see me. And yeah, I think I definitely leave an impression. I left one on you. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, the first time I met you, 
Damn, I guess we were drinking at Five Paces before. And in the daytime. Before I took Tawny out. <laughs> yeah, and in the daytime. We'll go see her tonight. Yeah, we should. We we'll should. We we'll should. We gotta make a. Yeah, but. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about that later. We'll be literally next door. Right? I know, I know. We cannot go say hi, and she only works on Thursdays. How long have you been in Atlanta? Two years. Two? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, but I've been DJing in Atlanta for about four. Four? Mm-hmm. Coming down from Charlotte? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. How long have you been going out here? About four years? Yeah, the first place I ever went to in Atlanta was actually MJQ. Mm, that's... And that's when MJQ was dope. Mm, it's still all right. It's all right, but but four years ago... It was a different... I it remember... Like an exclusive community. Yes, just... It was Atlanta in a nutshell. Dude. For real, for real. <laughs> I know I fucked with you. So I remember I got there, and for the listeners that don't know, MJQ is an underground club. Like, it's literally actually underground. So you walk up. Ponce and Ponce de Leon Place. Across from Ponce City Market. It's a totally cool spot to go. So you walk up, and it's just like this little hut, and you literally go down, and you lose cell phone reception, and it's all red. It's cash only. And you go down there, and it was like, it, it was the biggest variety and collective of people in Atlanta and the music was so raw. I dude, I when I went down there I was like, I am going to move here eventually. Mm. And I did. Wow. And I did. <laughs> so NJQ was one of the MJQ. It's such a statement for Atlanta. I wish it was still like how it used to be, but it's still cool. It's still fun. I would definitely still recommend to go. Let's go next Wednesday. Let's do it. Let's I'm so down. I'm so down. I'm so down. Because that's the only day. I guess. Well, I Friday mean, and Saturday are pretty. No, Wednesday's the way to go. Wednesday. Yeah, and um. There's no more staple of a place. No, than a, than absolutely, a absolutely, absolutely. But you have what STK? That and is. you can go to Red Martini, but it's honestly just like a hip hop club. It's not like a unique display of shit the way that MJQ does it. You know, Red Martini and STK are just, you know, I mean they're popping, but it's like any other place that could be popping on a Wednesday, you know. Right. A bougie a fucking bottle service. <laughs> yes. People standing on the couches. Place. Right. Yeah. Like, fuck that. Dude. Right. Like, right. I mean, we go there. I do that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I do I, it. I accept it. You know. But it's not my flavor. It's not my favorite thing to do. And I don't That's hate it. I love it. But. Like, I don't, it's not my flavor. <laughs> it's definitely some alley cat underneath. Absolutely, alley cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a member. I'm a, I'm a Me too. Member. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So her Nan, I met him one of the first times I came to Atlanta as well, and when before I moved to Atlanta. Charlotte at this point wasn't playing house music properly. Like the only time you would hear it is if you went to a gay club, and it was like really, you know, it wasn't like underground good house music. Nothing wrong with gay clubs, love gay clubs, mm. love gay people, I'm gay sometimes, mm. blah, 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 whatever. Yeah. Um, but um, I met her nan, and he was saying how he ran house events at Alley Cat when he was still in East Atlanta before it burnt down. He was like, come through. I was like, eh, you know, I'm not really a house music kind of person. He was like, you just haven't heard it properly. And I'm like, all right. So I go to look wow. for Alley Cat, and you know, the sign was super small, so it was kind of hard to see. So I'm walking around, I'm trying to find it, and I hear the like, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I walk past, and then I start walking backwards because you know my shoulders are moving, and I'm like, I think I found it. I think I found it, and I go in, and I was like, Is this Alley Cat? And they were like, You in the right place, girl. And I go in, and just I fell in love with House, like truly fell in love with it because of Alley Cat and her nan. The East Atlanta or West Atlanta? The spot? East Atlanta spot. The Shelton Road spot or the. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> Took a little break. Yeah. Had so to. this is gonna be an interruption in the podcast, guys. <laughs> um, so I'm not gonna ask where were we where are we going. So I was mentioning before about production. I haven't put anything out there yet, but I've been learning. So like I said, I'm trying to have something out by I will have something out by 2020. Um, some more stuff I can talk about. I can talk about. I don't know. You asked me. You write your own music. Yeah. Um, so when I do produce, it's purely coming out of my own brain. I don't like sit there and like write it with you know a hand of paper, but I play with the keyboard and make my own melodies and harmonies and harmonies and whatever. But I can't sing. I cannot sing. It's really a shame. Mm-hmm. I've taken um, singing lessons before, and they were pretty much just like, oof, <laughs> like girl. So, 
I what were your I hobbies growing up? I played sports. I was a big jock. Um, I played soccer mostly, basketball, track, volleyball, you name it. But I was actually one of the best 40 players in the state of North Carolina for about five years. For what? Soccer. For soccer? Mm -hmm. No way. I was a captain of my club team for five years as well. Mm. We won states three years in a row, and I brought us to regionals two years in a row. Dang. And I started as a freshman Providence? on the varsity team. Yeah, I went to Providence. Yeah. Wow. You actually know what you're talking about. Yeah. Well, I started a... I listen. Yeah. Well, good job. Um, I started a varsity my freshman year, so... Mm. Yeah, I was really good. Jeez. And when I quit, my dad was like, I don't know what else you think you're going to do. I'm like, well, dad, I'm going to be good at a lot of things. Here I am. What on position were you? On my state team, I was center midfield. On my high school team, I was right forward. And on my club team, I was right center defender. Right center. <laughs> right center defender. And like on that team, we did a 4 3 3. So that's flank, right? Mm hmm. The most heavily running position mm -hmm. on the field? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the one I was. I broke a I broke a record at my high school for a mile in five minutes and fifty nine seconds. Jesus. Yeah, I used to be a beast. Wow, that was your high school's record. Mm hmm. That's slow as fuck. <laughs> Damn. Most people are impressed with that. What was your mile? Oh. Well, yeah, you did bike forty two hundred miles, so yours is probably a little more impressive than mine. What is it? Four ten. Yeah, no big deal. Yeah, used to run. Yeah, you definitely did. I, I, I wasn't much of a long distance runner myself, though. I didn't like it. I got too bored. Yeah, I don't know why that's my thing, but... It's good. That's it, a healthy it, thing it, to it have. It used to be, and it, it is again. Yeah. It's a healthy thing to have. Good for you. Do you still run a lot, or... Yeah? I'm taking, like, a week off, but... um. To drink, to work, to, to sleep. put some weight on. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you're not, like, shockingly skinny, but I don't think you have any body fat. Yeah, it was that. It's been at, like, 4 or 5% since I've gone vegan. Not in the beginning. It's yeah, like yeah. Like, four, three or four so months. So you're to full get vegan. Tell I'm me more just, about that. I mean, that? I'll still, like, eat a little cheese and yeah. some bullshit here and there. Indulge. But yeah, it's been the most amazing change of my entire life. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Gosh, I want to, but golly, do I love steak. <laughs> I love a good medium or steak. But most people that do it, or actually every person that, that has done it, I know it's different for everybody. Some people's body can't handle being vegan, but if your body can, it's like the best way to go, right? Yeah, so everybody's body can handle vegan. Oh, it can. There's, okay. There's so literally no such thing as not being able to eat more plants. Okay. Or just only plants, I guess, is what I was thinking. Like, some people need more protein. Yeah, so protein is in plants. Yeah. And the way that cows, chickens, pigs get their protein, protein is from is plants. Through plants. Right. So right. it's literally just recycled protein plants. plants that we get. Right. Plus all the carcinogens and, and diseases that, yeah. that that goes through a life right. of, of any living being. Right. I'm not super into the the nature, you know, preserve the wilderness part of veganism. Mm -hmm. I acknowledge that, and that's huge. Mm -hmm. I definitely want earth global style, warming, the yeah. earth, yeah. you know, to slow down and agriculture, making food for animals is the single biggest thing harming our planet, our atmosphere and climate change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is part of it, but it's mostly just because I'm scared as fuck to get cancer. Yeah, amen. I'm really fucking scared because it runs in my family. Mm -hmm. Well, it runs in anybody's family. Right. Everybody has it. Yeah, exactly. It's just how much fucked up shit did you eat? Right. You That's really, really what really it's about. What you eat. How many Oreos and Pop-Tarts and bullshit things did you continue to consume? Mm. How many eggs and steaks uh. and bacons did you eat? <laughs> Probably That's too, God. That's really God. what it is. Golly. How much chicken did you get? Yeah. Because that will give you cancer. Yeah. Period. It's not if, it's when. Yeah. And I'm scared as fuck of that happening to me. So I adapted this plant-based diet never with the intention of doing so. Yeah. 30 years of my life, I ate meat. Okay. As a carnivore. And you're 30? I'm 31. 31. 11 months ago, I gave it up, and I never will go back. I can never consider 
I've eaten meat a few times since in the past year. Sure. And I've never had worse farts or shits <laughs> since then. Sure, it used to be real bad over a year ago, and I can't even really remember that. Yeah. <laughs> but my digestion is so amazing. I take three shits a day. As soon as I wake up, three? it pops right out. It's two wipes. It's done. It's quick. Yeah, and it's like clockwork. <laughs> two wipes. I love, I love, I love the detail. It's good. It's yeah. not three. It's not gross three. Or Religiously. I make three. sure I put my feet up on a squatty potty <laughs> or on a trash can or, or, the fuck or you can squat a nair can or wherever <laughs> because you need to release the poop. Yeah. At an angle. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard. I've if, heard. If, have you never pooped like this? Yes, I have actually. I have. Um, I I house sat for a friend and like um dog sat and she was like, this is my what you call it the squatter squatty so, potty. <laughs> yeah. Um, she was like, use this every time you poop. Don't do anything else. And I probably need to get one. Yeah. Probably like need to buy bucks. one. Yeah. My um flow was a lot smoother. <laughs> if I can say the most. Well, think about your body. Like it's naturally kind of. As this 45 right, degree right. angle being pinched. Right. And but the way that it, goes, it's kind of like, so if you can. <laughs> Absolutely. Just flows right out. Yeah. It's like when you're taking a squat, that's one of the things about the bike ride. I wish we, all, we had to shit a lot. I wish all the listeners could see you acting this out right now because so because he actually is acting this out. Don't you know. Everybody that you know, it. Drop it down. If, you, if you're going <laughs> to squat, take the poop. Well, you gotta pray too at the same time. You gotta put up the prayer hands, just like you just uh, you gotta put up the prayer hands the while you're doing squatter, potter, potter, squatter, potter, squatter. <laughs> Is that it? Squatty potty. Okay. Squatter potter. That's good though. That's probably the second name that they were thinking. Probably. When they were making the creation. And it was squatty that one guy in charge. Potter. It was that one guy in charge. I was like, you know what? I like squatty more than squatter. Yes. Squatter sounds like a homeless person, so we're gonna go with squatty. Well, that is what a squatter is. Exactly. Pretty much. Exactly. Squatter rights. Nice. Now I'm only going to think about poop whenever I think about, like, like I hear squatter. That's all I'm going to think about. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> think about you in this podcast and pooping. Squatty putty. Squatty putty. Well, I do have the GoPro set up for the first time, so I will be able to cut on the video podcast between the two angles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and so. I have another GoPro um, the, the goal is to have the main camera and then two other cameras. Mm -hmm. So the, So you can have the different angles too. Like whenever you like say something, shoot different I shots say and stuff. Right, right. You want to focus it on someone's face and I get it. I'm picking up exactly what you're putting down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cause it's, it's, uh, I'm getting pretty good at the editing on Premiere, but it's really still just about the audio. Mm -hmm. So have yeah. you ever listened to podcasts? I don't really listen to podcasts that much. I should. Um, Making music and all yeah, that. Yeah, usually when I'm on my headphones, I'm, I'm, I'm on the music spectrum of things. But um, yeah, I'll try to. Definitely going to be. Best concert you've ever gone to? Honestly, probably this past weekend at EDC. No way. I was, it was my first EDC. I've, I don't, I, ugh, excuse me. I had only ever been to festivals like Imagine and Shaky Beats here, which are a lot smaller in comparison to EDC. And I was so inspired. Um, my favorite set was Arl Grime. I mean, he's a god. I don't know if you've heard of him before. Of I cried like three times. It was, and um, I know people use a lot of drugs and stuff when they go to these kinds of things. But myself, since I'm a DJ and I'm trying to network and stuff like that, I can get a little weird, but I can't get out of my mind the way mm -hmm. that a lot of people do. So those tears were like, and when I say sober, I don't mean literally sober. Like we're talking like, you know, a couple beers, a couple blinds, you know, relaxing. Oh, I know. You know, so I wasn't sober, but... Say so, less on that. Right. Sorry. And, um, yeah, like, I cried, like, straight up. I cried three times. It was, it, it was, I was so inspired, and when I was listening, I'm, I'm like, oh, my God, dude, I'm trash compared to this. <laughs> Holy hell, I'm trash. Well, I, wow, I need to step on my game, but I was so inspired, and um, I got to meet so many cool people, and the vibes were just, uh, like, I think there was one, one dude that was, like, yelling at his girlfriend in the middle of the crowd, and just everybody else was pretty much, like, shooed this guy out mm -hmm. without yelling at him. It was just, like, this unanimous group effort of That's scooting cool. him out, because yeah. he was, like... 
And I mean, out of thousands and thousands and thousands of people I saw, he was the only person that was doing anything that caused an issue or was anything negative. Yeah, and that shit rarely happens. Exactly. And when it does, community rises yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. Which is almost kind of cool that it happened exactly. now because They're you like, get that get experience. Rid of this, dude. Right. We are all vibing. And so, and I met um, the house I stayed at. I went with my homegirl and I met like 20 new people that were all in the house and everybody was loving and I met a whole new family and... This was my best concert, for wait, sure. Wait, what? So, the family, like, the people that were staying there, like, we turned into a family. They turned into a family of mine. Mm. So, it was, like, 20 people. And that's kind of hard to go to a whole new house where there's a whole new group of people that you don't know. And for everybody to be able to vibe. Because as you get older, people are so different. Personalities get so much stronger. So, it can be harder for people to get along. But everybody was just so nice and kind and I don't meet that a whole lot even though Atlanta is awesome I love Atlanta but the whole vibe of a festival is just undescribable mm. and truly incredible I had the most amazing what's the subject on which your verse and you feel the general public needs to know more <sighs> just about anything <clears throat> Well, I only speak about what I know about I know that there's probably a whole lot that the public needs to be more um, woke about in a sense. But the only thing that I can talk about is my stance on women DJs and women producers. Um, how Is it women or female? How would you say that? <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't know. I call my, like, I call my friends or bitches. Lay. But like, oh, like, I say lay. <laughs> See, I can the take The man that. can't say bitches. Don't say broad. You can't you say can't bitches. You can't even say the B you word. Can't. No, no, no. It's no. not even... <laughs> I and that's why I said it first because I don't want to let it own it. Sure, sure. But then I very specifically acknowledge. It's one thing if it's your homegirl and you're like, hey, bitch. You know, like, it's like, what's up, bitch? But definitely not okay, like, okay, or cool to be like, you're being a bitch when you're a dude or when you're a female. I don't ever call ladies a bitch in that sense. If I think that a woman is being, and this is my friend, I think she's being mean. I'm just like, you're being really mean and you're hurting my feelings. I would never say, like, you fucking bitch. Like, that's just not the way I communicate. Even if someone's being disrespectful to me, I'm like, okay, ma'am, I can't do this right now. You're making my energy really, really down. So I'm just going to walk away from this conversation. But if you're talking sideways to my friend, I'm like, okay, so you better, be you know, that's a whole story. You don't talk to my family like that. But, um, but, um, damn, what was I about to say? Oh, right, exactly. So I feel like a lot of female DJs, they feel the need to, because for me, I'm biased towards females. Like, most of the time, if you're a female DJ, I'm gonna like you. But if you're really bad, and you're just using, like, your sexuality or whatever to just make yourself, like, make it be overseen that you're not talented and that you're just utilizing your body, I want that to be recognized. I want females in general to just be more heard and be more welcomed. Um, I wish I could be talking about something a little more serious, but I'm, I'm just not that well versed. We're 45 so. minutes into it. No. <laughs> right, right. What do you feel about that specifically about women using their bodies? I think it's just a industry. damn shame. I think it's a damn shame. Like, I could, if you're a model, and I mean, like, you know, like, I, you know, it's not like I dress like a boy, you know, like, I still dress cute and stuff like that, but I just hate when I see a female DJ up there jumping up and down in, like, a sparkled bikini, and they're not even transitioning or reading the crowd or even being a good person when they meet fans or whatever, you know what I mean? I think it just makes the stereotype even worse for us and already gets the pressure put on us that actually work our asses off and don't utilize our bodies more to sound perfect or whatever because they're expecting us to sound like shit. So because of that expectation, I know that there's no time that I walk up to a paradox that I don't go up there and I'm not completely prepared to murder it. No matter what I thought I was gonna play or what I'm going to play, whatever. And this year in 2019 particularly, there hasn't been a set that I've walked away from. And I've been DJing for about five years and the first four years, I can't say that every set I walked away from, I felt like, yeah, bitch, I just killed up. And I know we're just talking about bitch, but in this sense, I can use it because in 2019, this past year, every set I've walked away from, I'm like, I just fucking murdered that. Mm. Like, whoever was here, come and tell me about it because I know that shit was fire. You know what I mean? It. And it's just... So, mm. um, that's part of what I want, you know, what I was promoting before about the promotion group and kind of like the squad that I'm trying to make with like, 
you know, I want to create a logo and a name. I haven't gotten there yet, but this is in the works. I want to create like a logo and a name and something that's just like a comfortable, respectful environment and something to follow that is female based in such a male dominated industry. You know what I mean? And I want to be the leader of it because I feel like there's not really a face for that. There isn't. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of people that try Especially to be. In Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> Don't I know it. <laughs> Don't I know it. Um, but I feel like a lot of people that even try to assume the face for things and try to have the leadership in something, it's not a purely based or like, you know, where it's like, where it's coming from isn't pure. It's like just, just from making money. But for me, I want to do it to actually, because for me, when, when, like right before I found the music and stuff, I was at a really low place and I have been at a really low place in my life that I never, ever could have dreamed that I would be sitting right here talking about this or having this podcast or playing the festivals I played this year. I Her, didn't, yeah. I didn't have a hope in hell that there was this option. And if, like if there, there girl. you know and if there could have been something like what i'm speaking of like something that could have shown me the light a little bit sooner i might have maybe not mm. have wasted years mm. the way that i did being lost you know so i want to do that not you know and if i can just make money for my parents to go and have that vacation like i told you about and to be comfortable that's all i want that's all i want i don't i like i don't care to be rich i care to be rich in like fulfillment and you know what I mean? So if I can just make enough to where I'm making this happen and make this dream come true for like several women. And I mean, you know, dudes too. I love y'all too. Like y'all can follow me too. Like y'all can be a part of this, but it's like a women, women focused thing. And I don't mean to be like gender biased. And I hope, I, I encourage, I love that women have so many active groups together because women are way more proactive I know it, than men. Because we're way more passionate about things. Mm, and I, and I, consistently say that women generally are harder workers than men absolutely because we know we have to i say 60 plus percent we know we have women to. women are hard wasn't workers. i just telling you about how about about how much i make sure that because of how many like barbie djs go up and fuck it up for me and how and how with that being said i have to go up there and make sure that i blow it out of the water because they're expecting me to fuck up so because of that i do work 10 times harder than a lot of people I fucking know just to make sure that when I go up, it's fucking flawless. Mm -hmm. And when you walk away from my set, you're like, I can't say shit. You know what I mean? Because I've had that happen before. I've fucked up before. And when I have fucked up, I've looked up and I've seen DJs that are like, you know, just peeping them on my set being like, there's no way this bitch can be cool and be a good DJ and be kind of cute. I've seen their faces when I fuck up and it's just like this unanimous, like row of seven dudes just shaking their head at the same time. And I'm like, dude, any one of y'all could have fucked up this way and none of y'all would be shaking your heads the way that y'all are right now because I did. So I made goddamn sure I never did it again. And I'm not. Not gonna fuck up. I'm gonna go up there and be flawless and keep continuing to be better. But that's only my DJ shit, like sets. I'm kind of a train wreck in every other regard. But if I could just sound good on the decks, that's really all I care about. Mm. And sound good on my podcast. Mm. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what are you passionate about? <laughs> well, music and changing the world and um Having like female relationships in my life has always been something really important to me. So just who's somebody you look up to? Well, my mom, for one, honestly, we didn't have that type of a relationship growing up just because of, you know, um, well, now we do. Now we do. You know, everybody goes through their triumphs and my mom went through hers and she came out of it like a fucking champ. Mm. So she's definitely someone I look up to. Alice in Wonderland is someone that. I'll always look up to Alicia Keys, Beyonce, Missy Elliott, um, my best friends, Don Jordan, Alex Johnson, love y'all forever. You guys are two of my idols. My homegirl, DJ Brooklyn, Urban Hippies, she's here in Atlanta. She was like the first DJ I ever met in person that like completely set the example of what a female DJ is supposed to be and how you react to situations because... We constantly are getting tried. Like, we go out, and I meet 10 DJs, and eight, eight out of 10 of them are saying some 
some fucked up rude shit or whatever to try to get a reaction out of me. And she taught me how to carry yourself with grace, but still be a badass. DJ Brooklyn, I love you, bitch. I hope you hear this one day. I hope everybody yes, hears this. I love you. You're Who my else mentor. You want to shout out? Um, my dad, my sister is one of my heroes, Jesse Reitler. My dad, Ed Reitler, he's number one, number one, number one. I Ed love boy. you, Dad. Ed, you're the shit. I love you so much. And my brother's an OG, Tom. You're the shit. I love you too. Um, and Derek Moser, he's a really good friend of mine. Tyler Flack. Um, Stephen Elder, mm. all y'all, all y'all. I'm about to text y'all right when I'm done with this. I'm gonna be like, y'all better check this out. I give y'all a major shout out. Shoot. Love y'all so much. 45, <laughs> 32 seconds. Check it out, check it out, check it Names out. Names reference. Right. Hey, mom. Um, but yeah, yeah. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. I've had such a good time with this podcast. Oh, it's been so fun. Pleasure. It's Absolutely. been so fun. It's been so fun. Yeah, your energy radiates. Really? Always. And I felt Thank that. Thank the you. first time I met you and every other. When I didn't even know that I met you. Yeah, I mean. Well, okay, so you know when your friends on a date with a dude, you don't really register them that much? You're not supposed to. Be. Yeah, exactly. You're exactly. Not supposed to. Exactly. You're literally, exactly. you did all the things. Exactly. I did all the things. I did all the things, right? Give me a high five because that doesn't happen that often. <laughs> <laughs> Let me bask in that real quick. Bask in that great Let me bask in it. Oh, some so people. Some people. It's just a GoPro. The real cam's still going. Real cam's still going. <laughs> yeah, we got a little side cam action tonight. It's all about the side cam. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But, um, yeah. How do you there... feel about the new opera lounge domain? Domain! So, where I re-met you. Yes. Where I officially met you, for real. Yes. Where I officially met you. I think it's beautiful, but I went back there for a costume contest. This is actually a funny story. Mm. So I went there for a costume contest for Halloween. Like, you know, I love dressing up, but now that I'm older, dressing up is kind of a hassle. It costs money, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's fun, but if I do it, I'm trying to go win a contest, win some money to pay my rent. Hell yeah, girl. So I dressed sure. up as, like, a dead nun, like a haunted nun, mm -hmm. and I went to Domain, and you were supposed to sign up by 1130, and that's when the cutoff was. So got there by 1130, signed up. I'm like, I got this in the bag. And they told me that the announcements were going to be until 130. So I'm like, it was... um. It was mostly a bunch of college kids. I don't know if that's regularly the crowd, and I'm sure college kids are awesome, but I'm 27, well, almost 27. I can't. I'm too old to hang around a bunch of college kids. Like, I can go to an unfamiliar spot where I don't know people, but not when they're, you know, mm -hmm. like, all in the same fraternity and sorority, and they all, you know, like, blah, blah, blah. The man's not like that. Well, when I went there for the costume contest. It was like that. Anyway, mm. I'm not saying that it's like that. I'm sorry. Love Domain. Shout out. I'm sure it's a dope. Oh, I'm that was an event after the soft opening? Yes. Gotcha. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. The soft gotcha. opening that you and I met at, that, that that was all industry shit. Like, that was all of us. So they brought some techies in. Right. Right. See, I was a Georgia State fraternity guy. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure. So, so when you were. I was a social chairman for. That probably would have been the spot. <laughs> nice you semester. It all been so we went to opera. We went to Cuckoo Room and Flip Flops, and you know, all through Crescent Avenue. Um, but we brought the girls, <sighs> dude. Like Georgia State has some hot women. Yeah, I've heard. Out, and they're beautiful and smart. Like it's it's great, and the the ratio is consistently awesome. And like we said earlier, women are more out there and right. active than dudes mostly. So. Fucking love it. Like, I had this gold standard of guys that I was friends with and brothers with at Georgia State High Cap. Mm -hmm. And then we had some sister sororities and different groups and just, you know, in downtown, the center of Atlanta. Like, mm -hmm. what the fuck? How do you have a fraternity down there? You don't. Like, yeah. We didn't. It wasn't real Greek life. Like, right. No, it was townhomes that we got like our third year in. That's even more. We had it. house. <laughs> we had off-campus housing, real houses in Atlanta in neighborhoods. You can get away with one more shit. Yeah, yeah, dude. And, like, I held one down for four years in Morningside. Mm -hmm. Like, a three-story, six-bedroom house. Mm -hmm. It was fucking ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, well, anyway, so... That's where my couch surfing days started. That's where your prime time yeah. couch surfing days were? That's... That wasn't the prime time. It was just the start. <laughs> Couch to couch, just starting the dream. Oh yeah. Just just where the dream began. 
That's where it began. <laughs> yes. With a, with a cheers to that. Cheers. Well, cheers to that guy. And your grammar was correct. Oh, was it? Yeah, yeah I'm actually very correct. particular about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't. I wasn't trying to correct you. Good, because if I actually was wrong, I would. I, I would want you to correct me. It begun, and then I said it began. Okay. Right. Okay. Because I was affirming <laughs> your, and Thank I just you. have to talk that out because it's important. <laughs> Thank the you. Details. So that's something else that I want to talk about. That's important. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But um, yeah, my dad's very adamant about um, if I ever say anything incorrectly, he's like. <laughs> Always, always on the ball about correcting me, and I really appreciate that because mm. what you cannot know what you're talking about, but if your grammar's on point, people will believe you. Absolutely, people will follow it. You could straight up, like, if you give the most convincing lie that you've seen the sky be polka dots, and you give it in the exact right way, and the jargon's perfect, people will follow. Mm. <laughs> it's crazy, but um, anyway, so a domain for that costume party. So, like, I thought I had it in the bag, and since it was a bunch of people that, you know, you know, since I'm a little bit older, I was like, let me just go and leave for a little bit, and I'll come back for when the announcements and when What they, day was this? It was Halloween. So, oh, this was Halloween. Thursday, I believe. Um, this is when I was, I was wearing a nun costume, mm -hmm. I signed up, I thought I was going to win. I come back, <laughs> you know, for the people to be brought up on stage. I get back, and I thought that, you know, like, signups had been cut off. But I come back and there was this dude. Do you watch Game of Thrones? Oh, absolutely. There was this dude. I swear to God, he was dressed up as a white walker on top of the dragon that had turned in to a white walker. And this shit was like 30 feet big. What? Like he had to have two of his homies spotting him so that when no the tail way. moved. Listen, 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 <laughs> listen, amazing. listen, listen. I walked in. I walked in. I saw that. I walked out. <laughs> I lost. I would have voted for him. I would have voted for oh me. Like, fuck God. me. I was so... <laughs> if two guys profit. Wow. It, it was... It was and, and they had to have made that costume themselves. Like, mm. I mean, where are you going to buy that? <laughs> I like how you told me that story and you truly told it to yeah. me. And you didn't have to get out your phone to show me a picture I to think... explain... <laughs> Because I feel like that's one of the biggest problems in society today. For sure. Is people can't, they can't tell talk. stories They anymore. can't talk. I know. They I know. don't know how to just say some stuff without <laughs> referencing a data point or the that's phone. That's too bad. That's too bad. Like, that's, get that's, off that's it. Too damn you know, bad. We use the internet. It's important, right? It's what yeah. we're doing now. Well, you're very much about human interaction. Like, you straight up look at people in the eye when they speak. So I know that means a lot to you when people can... Say something new without having to revert to something that isn't themselves. Absolutely. I can do that. I can do that. I, I'm, I'm the queen yeah. at charades. Queen oh, at charades. Dude. Like, that's my motherfucking we game. We should play some charades. We totally can. Absolutely. We totally can. The next time that, like, you know, if the YouTube viewers get bigger, we can actually, like, act out a game of charades. I'll bet. I'll I mean, that. that's the goal. Is yeah, to absolutely. 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 Is to get more of that video. Well, in any way that I can help, I totally will. For sure. I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm all about a dream, man. I'm yeah. all about a motherfucking dream. So tell me about these tats. Cool. So yeah, um, I have like um, the, the queen crown on my thumb because I'm from Charlotte. They reference it. It's a queen city. And then these are all like music notes. So that's treble clef, half note, bass clef. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I'm 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 drinking Natty Lights. I'm a little burpy. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> listeners. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's the water we got. <laughs> I mean, that's, like that's my alcoholic water. You know, no, I, I like the seltzer beer. No, no, no. But I, mean, I like fucking Natty, bro. Because you're because you're like, drinking, but you're not getting drunk. Right. But you're drinking. I mean, like you're not. I mean, you're not staying sober, but you're not getting like you know. You're not getting hammered. It's that holy water. <laughs> hey. And what I'll do is it. I'll put it in the freezer and mm. let it get a little slushy. And drink it like a froth. You, you know what? You you would. I know. You would. I know. And then my last That's tattoo. That's how I get bougie. My last tattoo <laughs> is like a um it's it's behind my ear. Mm -hmm. It's a date that means a lot to me that I don't want to get too much into right now. 2313. Yeah. And there's a bird next to it and that resembles freedom. Mm -hmm. that yeah. Um that date is something I want to talk about like when I get a little more recognized, and I feel like I have a little bit more of a platform to talk about it. Of course. Sometimes yeah. people can't respect... And audio, internet, like everything we talk about now, it's a conversation, but it's permanent. Absolutely. It's Absolutely. inscribed into history forever. Right. right. And I want to make sure like when I tell this story, I want to be In the future, perfect. people will be like, 
hey, hey Siri <laughs> or Alexa, reference that point in yeah. the David and Zoe podcast where they talk about Zoe's and I'm future talking about going right up. Now. <laughs> and that's that's now like that you can yeah. already pretty much get Siri or Alexa facts, facts. to do that. Absolutely. Yo, isn't that crazy? Yeah. Isn't that cool? How do you feel about Elon Musk? I don't know if I have much of an opinion. Or do some research. Yeah. Do you um you should do you use YouTube? Yeah. Yeah, so you should get YouTube premium on a family plan. Okay. Pay two seventy five a month. Okay. And I don't have to use ads on YouTube anymore. <laughs> and it's literally like, I almost want to get rid of Apple Music. It's so good. Really? And I use the Siri. I, I can't get rid of this. <laughs> like being able to say, hey, it's Siri, just, play. It's just too correlated with that. And, and, and like to be able to send people stuff like through text, it's too. Apple is such a dictator. Really, but I really. use it. I oh use it. I'm not going to use anything else. I'm not going to use anything it's worth else. It. It's good. I'm I love all my Apple products. I'm, I'm, I'm very, I agree. I'm very I love all my Apple products. less unfortunate that Apple exists in a lot. Right. I hate that it's a dictator the way it is, but goddamn do I love it. Yeah, I mean. I'm not going to use anything may, else to produce maybe, music, use as a phone. Maybe it would have stayed different if Steve Jobs didn't die. I'm. I'm rereading the biography of Steve Jobs. Yeah. Written by Walter Isaacson. Okay. Um, you should read it. I, I think I want to sure talk about that. I'm gonna make a post yeah. about that. I'm gonna take a picture of me holding a book. I'll take the picture. Fuck yeah. <laughs> okay. And I, it's gonna be actually no, just me listening to, and I'll do like, Photoshop. Yeah. Of the Walter Isaacson biography of Steve Jobs. Okay. Because it's that it's that good. Okay. We should know where these products that our lives revolve around came from. For sure. Absolutely. Um, we should. The good and the bad, because he was shrewd. Right. He was shrewd. Right. Yeah. Talk more about that. He How took he was advantage shrewd. of people. Right. He was kind of an asshole. Absolutely. But. I feel like some of the greatest minds in the world were like that. He had good intentions. Yeah, but it's kind of like one of those people that's like, you know, for the benefit of science, that like do something that like could harm other humans, but for the benefit for research, like like for like for later on, that's true. You know what I mean? Because no, like, he, you know, he he overcame obstacles, bureau bureau bureaucratical, mm -hmm. operational, mm -hmm. governmental. Right. And systematic obstacles that should have never happened. Right. Personal, political, like he got fired. Like he literally, um, the iPhone shouldn't have happened. Right. But it did. We'll talk more about that. Um, cause I'm, cause I'm not Nobody very knew what the phone was going to look like before it got released because the hardware and the software people were completely different. So was the product design. So all three people were working on specific isolated models. Parts. Yeah. It's only only Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak, and a few developers and designers. Were the ones that knew about all of them. Actually knew. Mm -hmm. And so that was. So one did of all the three of them think they were working towards something separate? No, knew it. It just nobody knew what it was going to look like. Right. Okay. Which was why the hype has been so real is because there's no corporation, especially technology, mm -hmm. that's been able to safeguard their principles and practices and products. Sure. To show something in mass scale. Right. Apple, Apple's able to have that secu that security and especially across all the devices, you know, the seamless synchronicity is is next level. I'm uh, definitely gonna have to read. I'm, I'm I'm gonna have to read this. The audio. It's gotta book, be mind blowing. I mean, I do torrents. I use sure. Um, torrents. To. See, I'm a reader. I'm not someone that can like listen to things. Oh man, it's passive audio is the future. That's why these. Oh no, I so agree. Important. But like, I'm just like a. The way that yeah, like I like I have to. I mean. You, <laughs> preferably, you I would like both. I would like to hear it and read you it. Digest it differently. You know what I might do? I might I might listen to it and read it. Honestly, I might. That's the way to go. I might, cause that's I'll the best a, way I I'll can do a PDF on my iPad. Sure, sure, on sure, my sure. IPhone. Sure, sure. While cause I'm like I'm not slow, but the way that I like ingest things, I need like 
all hands on everything like for me to just be able to pay attention so that I can like <laughs> you know like I said ingest and put it in my brain like mm. like I said I'm not slow but the way that I learn is very particular you know very particular okay. so what is one of your biggest failures oh gosh and how'd you overcome it um so I got into a really bad drug rabbit hole and I ended up having to go to rehab so that was actually one of my biggest failures and my biggest accomplishments going to rehab it's actually the sole thing I think that grounded me the most and that made me the most understanding and like um be able to realize what I'm doing and not be like oh me why is this happening to me you know like it made me really and, and all the therapy and stuff, it really, truly actually, you know, other than my parents who I love and they're great and they did mold me too, but they weren't that communicative, you know, they were kind of mm -hmm. like, we show you that, you know, we show you what we love through our actions, not like through communication. And that's something that I think we are lacking so bad in society right. is being able to talk about our feelings. And that's one thing that rehab and all that therapy and stuff, because even when I was going to therapy, they told me that... I wasn't really an addict. I just had so many fucked up issues that I didn't really know how to deal with. So I numbed them and physically and mentally got addicted to them because I was so, I, I was so unfamiliar with knowing, and I'm, I'm, I'm emotional and I'm dramatic. So what I feel, I feel like is times a million all the time. So being able to learn how to cope with them and learn how when I do things, being able to recognize them and learn how to cope with other people's actions too. That's hard too. You know, the way that other people, like other people's actions and the way they affect you to not take them personally and to just really make yourself a bug on the wall to yourself and the other person and everything and all the strength that it made me build. It just, I think that was my biggest failure, my biggest, and my biggest accomplishment and the same thing. Like, I'm appreciative that I got that addiction. I'm appreciative I had to go to rehab because it was a failure at the time. Like, it was bad enough to the point to where I was stealing and, you know what I mean? Because I needed to, like, fill that in so bad. So, in that aspect, it was a failure. But I'm glad that it happened because now I can level myself down to anybody. And I can't judge anybody in the world, no matter mm -hmm. what they're doing. There, there are things that are morally fucked up that... I mean, I won't judge you, but, like, I can't forgive, you know? And we don't have to speak about those things, but you can think in your mind, like, what's morally unforgivable. But everything else, the Zoe Gray thing, that made me so much more open-minded to the gray areas of things and just listening to people and feeling people and understanding and being familiar with my feelings and understanding my feelings and being able to cry about things and not get mad about things and... <sighs> Wow, that was such a detailed answer of what my biggest failure was, but yeah, I remember reading that question and I knew this is exactly what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went to AA. Yeah, um, I, my mom still goes. My mom, she actually created a whole group, like a whole AA and NA group because she went through similar stuff that isn't revolved around faith or anything about Jesus or anything like that. Like it's still got the 12 steps essentially, but it's all like, you don't have to have faith. You don't have to believe in God. You don't have to put anything in a higher power. It's all just about the raw 12 steps without mm -hmm. any of that extra. I'd love to see that. It's, it's beautiful. And she's, I would love to see that. She, she's a little bit older. So she, she doesn't even run it. She created it, it was her idea. And she got people that are younger, like our age to run it. But she just goes to all of them, and mm. she sits back there, and you would never know that she's the one that created it. It's a great community. When I was running for office, I was um, sober. Mm -hmm. I was smoking weed, but... See, I don't define that as... Right, like, I wasn't getting <laughs> fucked up. Right? I think I think smoking weed doesn't... That, like, I, I think that is still sober in my butt. It's medicine. That's, that's what I was I taking a medicine, and I'm prescribed. I don't think that's a drug. I, I have a Georgia a cannabis card. I don't think you're going to be smoking weed to be sober. That's absolutely. my opinion. That's my opinion. And as do half the half states times. in America. Yeah, absolutely. So, and yeah. hopefully soon, all of them. Yeah. There's rehabs actually um, push you to smoke weed for your recovery. Mm. <laughs> Good. I know. <laughs> Thank God. It'll be normalized like that soon. 
Like, you should be able to pass a drug test, and if you have weed in your system, that, like, shouldn't, shouldn't. No, it feels like 90 minutes. <laughs> well, I guess you're a little bit, <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> I'm, uh, what, 14 times right. burst on this now? 14 it's, times uh, deep? You know, I guess I've done about four other podcasts before I started my own. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, and yeah, I think everybody should do it because it's kind of a way to become an authority on, and, and on a lot of subjects. And one of the things that I want to focus on is Atlanta and and, and love mm-hmm. and nutrition mm-hmm. and, and wellness and and positivity and, mm-hmm. and you know, people that I fuck with and their inspiration, stories. all kinds of stuff. If you were going to give advice to somebody wanting to pursue a career similar to yours, okay. what would it be? Okay. So the advice that I would give is to not necessarily learn from anybody. Um, when I when I started a DJ, what I did is I just went ahead and bought my own equipment. I bought like a one thousand dollar controller, and I taught myself. I don't suggest learning off anybody solely because you'll pick up their bad habits or you'll solely believe that whatever way they're saying is the way to do it. And the best way to do it is to learn from a whole bunch of different people, mm-hmm. see what they think, see how they play, and absorb it in your own way. And especially for women out there. Um, learn it more multiple times. Mm-hmm. Like and that. teach yourself. It's kind of like YouTube you. Yeah. Why well, I think that using YouTube is so important because there's a lot of different ways to do a Hell podcast yeah, you or can, be a DJ. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But you need to have a thousand perspectives. Right, exactly, to really be able to learn the way that you think that it should be done. Um, Exactly. Wow, we really do think very similarly. Um, And to really just, like, no matter what, it's going to feel lonely. Um, You're really not going to have a lot of people on your team until you start making it. And people are going to pop out of the woodworks once you do, if you do. Um, So you just have to really, truly be true to yourself and remember the people that were there for you before all that shit and really just stick to yourself and figure out what you want to accomplish through this you know like are you just trying to make sounds so that people can hear them do you have a do you have a bigger dream for that you know figure out exactly what it is that you want to leave on the world with your music and do it all yourself you know at first I don't want to finish by myself. Like, I really want to do it as a team. Like, I want to create a team in some way, shape, or form. But building up, you really have to thoroughly be on your own and just push through it by yourself. Because that's the only way to do it. Because at the end of the day, you're really the only one that's there for yourself until you've done something that proves for other people to want to be there for you, Mm -hmm. too, and be a part of your team once you prove, like... This is what I want to do. This is how I'm going to affect people. This is the sounds I'm going to create. Like, this is the impact I'm going to leave. And people will follow. Like, people will flock because good people want to follow a dream. Like, good people want to... So fucking with that. Want to do something fucking so amazing, fucking you know? That. So... That is what I'm feeling is kind of behind your move. Yeah. To Vegas. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I love Atlanta. I don't want to leave it. But I need to put my name in other people's ears out you know out there in the world and vegas is one of the hubs in the whole world about like playing music and becoming something so um also i wanted to mention i just got signed to an agency um grt management they're based out of new york um and they're the ones that pushed me to move to vegas um, they're the ones that are going to be setting me up with some gigs out there. Um, shout out to them. Mm-hmm. Love you, Greg. GRT. Thanks for signing me. GRT, baby. Love y'all. Bet. Love y'all, what love up, y'all, Greg? love y'all. What up, Greg? <laughs> Greg Stevens. How'd you meet Greg Stevens? Dope story. So I played at Imagine this year. I played at a silent disco. And for people that don't know, silent disco, you come up and you put on headphones and there's multiple DJs and you get to pick what DJ you want to listen to. It actually, like, each DJ has a color, so on your headphones it shows what color you're listening to. I know, I love that. So I as a DJ, you can look DJs up. Because you can be like, I'm repping the hardest. Right. And it's such a it's, popularity contest. Well, you know, it's a who's throwing it down the best contest. And it's That's a very, it it's a relatively It's not popularity. Rare. Yeah, but people can see who's fucking with who. 
yeah, but at the same time, you can see that and be like, I don't like this station or listen to whatever you want. True. So as a DJ, if you can look up and 96% of the people are on your color, that's better than most of the sex you'll have in your entire life. Like, it's truly inc- Anyway, well, we'll get to that. What if it's only 6%? I've never been on that side. I don't know. Anytime I've ever what done a sound disco, it's always been predominantly on my color. So yeah. I don't know. 50 plus? 75 plus. Bet. Not to boost my own horn, but Ooh, yeah. it's it's for real. I've never been on a side, like I've never played a side disco and they were not pretty much all in my color. Mm. <laughs> I don't know what it would be like to be on the other side, to I be honest with you. what that would be like to record with for content. Oh, it's pretty dope because when you record for content, you still get to pick like the song you want to play in the video. So you don't even need the sound, you know, so it actually I wonder what a me. music video would look like doing a silent disco. I don't know. Like, you mean like a little like clip or you mean like an actual music video for... I don't know. I don't know what you're speaking of exactly. Mm. You're like... A, full, a full-fledged music video. <laughs> okay. Like, for me or for like a rapper? Or like yeah, a for singer? you. Oh, yeah. I mean, to be able to like throw a video and like be able to or show it. Or just doing it. And show that 90% of the people are playing or are, are choosing to listen to Blue exactly. when I'm playing Blue. Yeah, it'd be fucking incredible. I was supposed to have a videographer, but... Anyway, so... You know, like, Facebook Lives and... Absolutely. I know, I know. All that. This is why I need the team. This is exactly yeah. why I need the team I'm telling you about, because I can't do all this shit with myself. But anyway, so, the way I met... Sorry, I'm talking really loud again. Talking really loud again. Listeners, sorry, I'm bringing it down a few notches. Loud, loudly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm speaking loudly. Thank you. So, anyway, I was... Yeah, that adjective, adverb, right. subject, verb, agreement... Right, right, right. ...is, right. like, my biggest... Thing. I mean, the theirs and and all that. I see people that are firmly in college that are still not spelling correctly. I'm like, how are you in college? How are you not? Dude, look at my latest Facebook post about going to jail for a month to pay off. Oh, yeah, no. Um, I voted yes on your Instagram story. I said that I would go to jail for a year. Or, I mean, I mean for a month to pay off all my student loans. Yeah, and like 50 people did and 20 people said no. Mm. Uh, but on Facebook, it's like 150 comments. Yeah, I bet. Were most about, people leaning towards that's, yes? That's where I did the question first. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like 85, 80%. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Because jail's but not that bad. But a lot of people were saying it's like 100,000 plus. Like. Yeah, jail's not that bad. No. Like, it's not that bad. Have you been? Mm-hmm. Jail's not that bad. Like, a month, that's not that bad. It's, you got, like, like, as long as you're not causing any trouble, you'll be fine. And, I mean, prison's a different story. But anyway, so the way I met my manager. The way I met my manager. So I met him at, imagine, I just, like, he, I knew him through people, and we were talking at one of the last sets of, you know, because I played the side of this ghost, so that's separate from, like, excuse me, I'm burping again. That's separate from you all the commotion. To, uh, acknowledge it with words. True. So that's separate um, from all the hoorah that's going on in the main festival. So I met him at the main festival. And once I ended, I was like, yo, I'm playing at the San Disco. I didn't even know who he was. But I was like, you got to come check it out. It was just cool. He was like, yeah, no problem. So he came and he checked it out. And then after my set, he was telling me how he's, you know, how he owns this agency and blah, blah, blah. And how most of the artists on there are, you know, house music. But I played an all bass set. And he was like... I've never heard a bass set in my life that I actually liked. Mm. And he was like, and I liked yours. Mm. And then we hung out for a while. The next thing I knew, he was like, I'm putting you on my roster. We got to get you found. Like, you need to be like, there's no reason that you should have been on the silent disco. You should have been on one of the bigger stages in the main festival. This is bullshit. And then now I'm on my way to Vegas. <laughs> Big high five. Big high five. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah, girl. I know. I feel, I feel incredible. I feel nervous, but I feel incredible. Well, I'll do everything I can to... You're definitely still going to continue to be in my life. Like, we're definitely going to help each share other. share and spread your message and... And yours. I'm going to share and spread. I mean, you don't need your help as much as I need the help. But I'll share and spread your message for sure. Always Hopefully you'll be wanting help from me one day. On my team, of course. <laughs> me too, me too. Of course. All right, is there anything we want to wrap up before we end this beautiful pod sesh? Pod sesh? <laughs> Yeah, what's uh, something meaningful that you want to leave behind? Um, I want to know that I affected at least one person, hopefully 
several, several, several through my message and what I'm trying to do. Like, I hope that I can, someone that was like in a shitty place and from what I'm, I've done and what I'm trying to do, be able to get them from a not shitty place. And I want to leave behind putting my parents on separate vacations mm. and just some, I want to leave behind like hopefully no, no bad taste in anybody's mouth about me. You know, like if I have offended somebody before or whatever, I want to be able to leave behind like completely good vibes with every human and hopefully better vibes for them when I leave so that when, when I leave, they can mm. feel something that I've done still within them. You know, um, yeah. Does this increase my vibration? Yeah. Does it? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Good, 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 good. It's been incredible. This, I can't imagine that I'm going to have, like, if this is a standard for podcasts, they're probably all going to be shitty from here on out. <laughs> I'll take that. Good, take good, that. good, 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 good. Yeah. We're hugging it out right now. Oh, Listeners are hugging it up. Oh. Okay. All right. All right. So where can everybody find you online? Um, so it's at DJ Z O E G R A Y on everything. Um, that's my website, SoundCloud, Facebook, Twitter, um, all the other stuff. I don't have a YouTube channel yet, but that will be my YouTube channel name. And yeah, at DJ Z O E G R A Y. Mm. Come and find me. <laughs> all right. All right, all right. Well, thank y'all for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. Wow. What a fun, informative, and fulfilling podcast with Miss DJ Zoe Gray. Had an absolute blast having her on. Y'all definitely go check her out and follow her journey along the way. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you stuck around this hour and 20 minutes, truly love and appreciate you guys. Subscribe, share, and if you would take a picture of this, Share it on your story. It's one of the best ways that we can get the word across about Mr. Atlanta Podcast. And if you have any great people that want to come on and share their story, please send them my way.